So I have, I'm sure I've shown this sketchbook before. It's a sketchbook of ideas. Uh, collages mainly, bits of done from scraps of paper. But I also stick things in when I like them. Here's an example. I was playing with inks on paper and this was a scrap left over. It actually was one piece. I tore it into two pieces and put it in here to remind me that what I enjoyed about this was the loose flowing drips into spacious areas. I don't want to just throw that away. I don't want to just paint over it. I want to keep it as a just a mental note, really. But I wanted to show you this one. So in the course of playing with inks in a sketchbook, actually for something else, it was to make marks that could possibly be used in my website. I made this and I really like this. So I saved it and I really liked it versus anything else I'd done at the same time. For example, here's another one that was done at the same time. Same process of dropping, putting water on paper, dropping ink on, and then letting the ink run. But in this case, I really like the effect, and in this case, not so much. So I can look at this and say, why? What do? What's different about them? The 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 areas of color are much more defined. Black, yellow, yeah, they overlap and make a nice green in places, but it's defined and clear and strong. The spatter's interesting coming off, that's different from anywhere else. Whereas on this one, the spatter is kind of all over. The yellow is not defined here, it's mixed in and made a muddy green. The black's taken over, but there's no really strongly defined areas of black. And even the marks I made drawing, they're thinner with a pencil here. And here they were with a big thick uh, woody crayon, which makes a much bolder mark. So I can look at that and say, hmm, so if I want to get that effect again or explore that effect, if I like it a lot, now it's time to do more. So my message to you today is if you like something, do more. Do 10 more, do 20 more, do 100 more. Explore that one thing. Dig deep into it. Don't just think, oh, that was nice. I'll never replicate that. You know, you will never replicate the thing you really like, but you will, you can let it lead you on a path of discovery. And so that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to very quickly demo for you how I would do that by tearing up this large sheet of cheap paper. It comes from Sea White in the UK. You have to order a certain amount to even buy this stuff. So it's not the easiest to get hold of, but it's 220 GSM regular drawing paper, not watercolour paper. But it takes a lot of paint or ink or water. And I like it for doing these kind of exercises where I don't have to worry. So I don't have to feel like I'm spending a fortune. It's probably 50p for a sheet of this, maybe 40p. But that's a lot less than three or four or eight or nine pounds for a sheet of watercolor paper so but i'm i'm going to tear it up into smaller pieces and work on smaller pieces and i'm just going to play with that same thing that happened here and see if i can get some more nice effects now i've also put some water into another jar and a bit of indian ink in there so that'll be uh, watered down also, the other day, I mixed some Indian ink with the Indian yellow. And that's this green. I'm not sure if I'll use that or not. These jars, uh, before you ask me where I buy them, I don't. I get breakfasts from a vegan place that deliver. And the little breakfasts come in these fantastic jars, which are perfect for keeping inks in. So, let's just have a go. So, I'm going to lay out a few of them. To start with we'll start with three and that way I won't be so precious about anyone so I've got clean water which will very soon get dirty and I'm just gonna put water on in different ways on each one and then I'm gonna 
dripping my inks now that one's a little bit too much water on that one i think for what i want just gonna take a bit of it off just trial and error and i'm gonna start with the paler more diluted indian ink so this has got a lot of water in it already and i'm adding that to the water that i added And I'm going to uh, put some of the darker in. And each one of these will take quite a while to dry because there's so much water. So I need to be patient and let that happen. And that's why I've got some more to work on. And then I'm just going to put in some of the yellow. And then see what happens. And if it's not watery enough, I've got my handy bottle. Of, this is just a garden spray bottle, but I use I fill it with water. And then if I feel like oh something's got too much ink and I want to fade it while it's wet, I can just pull some of the ink off with a tissue i just roll this on but that's quite a probably not a very economical way to do it i like how that is faintly running into there and then i might want to hold one of them up and let it drip and see what that looks like where the black and the yellow are mixing it's making this deep green Whereas this one has kept them more pure and separate, which is more like in the sketchbook, what I had in the sketchbook. I had the blacks and yellow more separate, and I liked that. And I'm stopping that black from running into that yellow. And then I'm going to put those aside to let those dry. This one, I really like, there's a lot of deep green there, so I'm just going to let it run. Let it do something in there and create a bit more interest. You can't work with ink without it getting all over your hands and all over your table. So cover something up. If you're doing this in the living room, make sure everything's covered up. Put each of those down. I might have a little... A little selective squirt I've got one more of the small ones left so this time oh look that was my dirty brush quite like what that did and you can get that off straight away and just leave very subtle stains I could now put some of the the more gentle water down in and then get that off and get these really subtle patterns you see what would happen if we do the same with the orange if we really put it in really watered down and then pull it straight off see that stains the paper much more than that black does and also because that wasn't watered down, whereas this is what this is heavily watered down. So I'm going to mingle that in now and try getting the greens. But the one thing that's important to say about doing this is if I try to replicate that one that I really liked in the book, then I'm just going to waste time and paper. That's never going to happen again, that, that one thing that I did something else will though so it's my job to find the next thing not to focus look back on what happened in the past that's nice that that happened very exciting but it's never going to happen again but something else will from that idea if i run with the next thing and this is what i wanted to say in this video really is to not get attached to 
the actual thing you loved, but more thinking about what did I enjoy. Now, this is still wet, but one of the things I enjoyed about that other one was the mark that was coming through it and the way what that did to it and the energy of that. So I'm just putting some mark, a mark through that one and see how I feel about that. I like that part. Not so keen on where I looped it round. Some white paint would sort that out though. And then leave that one to dry. And then now, very exciting, we've got these bigger ones. Let's see if I can fit them both on the camera. So we've got more room to manoeuvre here. So I'm going to get some clean water because it gets dirty very quickly and be back. Now, on both all of these so far, I've started with wet ink. What if I start with dry paper? I mean, you know, I've wet the paper first. What if I start by not wetting the paper first? What if I start by putting ink on, but then using the water spray to move it round? And then... And then go back to my other approach and start adding water and let that do things to the ink. I feel I've wimped that down a bit. I made it too wimpy. So I'll come back. Oh, that's not the strong stuff. Put in some more strong ink because I was really enjoying the strength of that and I watered it down by mopping it up. And the boldness of that I'm liking. Move that to one side and try. Now we'll go back to wet, wet, and then just try. This is the paler Indian ink, and I've obviously got some yet orange on my brush, so it's gone green, which is nice. Here it's darker. Look at that ink running into there. It just does such cool things, ink. It's a nice lesson in a lack of control as well because you can have something you like and the next thing you've ruined it because the ink will just do whatever it's going to do. And I'm not experienced yet at controlling it. And I, I'm not interested in making ink pour art. I want art that's more than that. I want to have controlled what I'm doing. But I do like it as sometimes the effects are nice and then going against that with something different bolder hmm it's hard when you get something you like like i'm really liking that to stop at the point before you've pushed it too far. I'm just liking those splatters and the way they worked. I feel like maybe a little bit of that down at this end would be nice. But not as much. Not making anything, not trying to make anything. Just trying to learn, just trying to experiment. Then what if instead of doing lines with a tool, what if I just pull the ink with something? So I've got a pencil here, just pulling the ink out. That's nice because it's still so wet that I can make it, put in, you know, make it do things. And this is still wet too, so I can do it on some of this. And then I don't want to mop that up and 
just uh, make it too diluted so I'm going to leave it to dry. So we started with this as the inspiration. I noticed what I liked about it the movement, the different tones here, the strong lines. And then I worked to experiment with that on loose pieces of paper. And I haven't got anything that looks as good as that first one. That's often the way. Um, this one, not as strong darks, not as much movement. This one has promise, but there's too much for me dark down here. Um, too much solid dark and then light up here and it needs a little bit of variety this is quite nice um, and nice movement off to the sides it's got the the lighter and darker but it's just not got quite the effect of that other one and I can look and compare them and see why this one, very delicate, needs more work, but uh, I like the way the inks uh, bloomed there and made these different patterns in the water. And then my two larger ones, much more life and movement in these, I think, and much more dark and light contrast. And I like where I pulled the pen through there, pencil. Uh, this one a bit less successful. It feels a bit more somehow contrived, like I was trying harder on this one. Uh, but that one's, you know, okay. Each one, though, has different characteristics. Each one's taught me something different about the ink. Something different to try next time. And that is what I mean when I say, if you get a good idea, do more. Just keep exploring it if you see something you like what people tend to do and the big mistake is that people tend to say oh, I really love that I want to make that again only bigger and then try 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 cannot replicate it that's very frustrating it doesn't work and it starts to make you feel like a failure when actually it's just that it's not possible to replicate the energy and joy and life in that came by accident. Anytime I start trying to do that again, it's never, never going to work. But what I can do is take the elements I like and play with those and experiment. And eventually what will happen is something better than what I originally liked. But it only happens if you're willing to make lots more. And this is why I say working with cheap paper and cheap materials if you can will make you feel a lot less precious than if you get a really nice expensive sheet of watercolor paper that you feel like you have to produce something on. And by the way, don't worry about my finger and my inky bandage. It, it has a little infection under there, which is being treated and I have to keep changing the bandage because I get my hands so filthy. Okay, uh, so I hope that was helpful. Just this idea of you've got something you like, don't try and replicate it, instead explore it, do lots more and see where it takes you. What you love is always the key to what's coming next in your art if you just follow the trail. I will see you next time. We are getting really close now to June 3rd when we start the free Find Your Joy Taster course where I am going to get a lot more into exercises that will help you start to explore, help you start to identify what you love and start to guide your work in new and interesting directions. So you can sign up for that above or below this video, wherever you're watching. It'll be in the description, the link to sign up. Do add your name. If you already signed up, don't worry, you don't need to do it again. But if you haven't signed up, do join us. It's going to be amazing fun. Can't wait to see you. Bye.